All right. All right, hold on to your horses. It's time to get back on the axe drop project. It's time to get back to the axe drop project. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this project. I've been thinking about it a lot and wanting to get back on it and get it done, get it everything moving. That and a bunch of other stuff, man. It's crazy in here. There's just projects fighting it out and they're like, like, no, I'm gonna, no, pay attention to me. Yeah. Anyway, today the important thing is to get these hides flushed, uh, refresh the lime and strengthen it as necessary, stir it up, and then get the hides back in. If they're ready to dehair, then I could go ahead and dehair them today. They're gonna actually lose a bunch of hair just through the process of flushing, that's okay. But I don't think they're gonna be ready enough for me and they're probably gonna go back in. Now I actually put another hide in this lime and I just checked it after it was in there for like a week and the lime was way too weak. So, you know, I had already had those other hides in there and I just added this one without even really stirring it up or anything. And the hides in there had kind of like used up the lime. That's, that's sort of a way to think of it. But I did add some more lime. I added a couple chunks of lime putty and mixed those up and stirred the whole thing real well and put it all back in there, uh, I think two days ago. Now I was thinking of using the hide that I just put in there, which is from the deer that I just shot most recently and using that for the axe drop project because I thought how cool would that be to kind of bring the whole project more closer to home by using uh, the parts from this deer that I just shot like during the project. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do that and I shot this video, this video. It's closing day of deer season. I just got my second deer. So I just decided to use this hide to make the axe drops for the cordwood challenge project. I just used this one, my little prototype, to sharpen up the knives to process this deer with. Um, is it done yet? And then I was like, eh, that hide's like super nice. It's like really, a really big hide and the animal is just very healthy. I don't know, the hide just feels really good. And I thought, you know, I'm not sure I can bring myself to do that because the other hide that we have is dragged, so the grain side's all messed up anyway, so it's kind of perfect for making the flesh side of the straps. And I kind of want to make like a jacket or something out of uh, all deer that I shot and then bark tanned. Eventually, that's kind of my goal. So I probably will just keep that hide and tan it. Okay, let's see what we got here. This is my new deer. The hair is still pretty tight in there. Here's our old deer. And here's the small goat skin. And the hair's slipping, but it's not slipping as easy as I'd like. Okay, so I have here a dull scraping tool, and that's what we want for flushing. It can be a little bit sharp, but not too sharp. Depending on what you're flushing and when. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. I'm just gonna get off the stuff that comes off easy. Let's say if anything, this flushing tool is a little too dull. because we're gonna go over this side many times in the tanning process and each time more of this gunk will come off. Now, this may look simple and easy and in a way it is, but it's a skill like everything else and I'm using, I'm utilizing more technique than you can actually see if you don't already do this. One of them is since this tool is really dull, I mean, it's actually a little too dull. I'm using a sliding this way as I push down. See that? You definitely want that in your hide scraping flushing arsenal. There's numerous processes that are carried out on the beam like this, and they vary depending on what kind of skin you're working on, what state it's in. 
Now I'm going to round to this hide, which means cutting off the tag ends that I don't want to use. There's cut marks all over this neck, so that makes it useless to us. So why go through the process of doing all that? Now here's a cut mark right here at this corner, which makes that corner useless. This part of the breast is like really thin and hard to tan and hard to scrape and there's nothing I like about it. The legs, not great out here at the end where the, the uh, knee is kind of. Don't need that, really don't need any of this. Same here, don't want the tail. So you can see why it's called rounding, now the hide's more rounded off. And you don't have to do that, it's just to me when I look at a hide, instead of seeing all these little tag ends as things I could use for neat projects, I just see work that I don't need to be doing when hides are so cheap. I mean, there's a whole tub of these hides up there, they've been around for who knows how many years. There's more where these came from and this just works way better for me to round it off. Now I probably won't do that as much with these deer hides, but we'll see. This is also extremely thin, so that means that any thin areas out on the edge are extra thin, and that makes them less useful. So that's good enough for now. Again, we're gonna go over this many times. So let's take a look at these deer hides. Deer hide number one, the one that's been dragged. You might be able to see here that the grain is very damaged, so this surface is not going to be very sightly. It's got meat on it, but I don't see any cut marks. Another factor is what angle you hold this at. If I hold it this way, it's much safer, but it doesn't cut as aggressively. So since this is really dull and this flesh is kind of tough, I'm going to keep the tool really flat. Like if it's way down here, it's gonna get under that stuff more easily. More like a cutting than scraping. You know, this is like cutting, this is like scraping. Again, I'm not gonna cover this very thoroughly, but I'll, I'll give you a few tips here. One is that you wanna keep a front of flesh moving forward like this rather than just scraping randomly over long pieces. Notice that I'm, I'm kind of stopping and not sliding over all the time. And I'm trying to establish a front like here and then advance it. Not sure what that's about. That looks like a bullet hole, maybe. This looks gross now, but it's gonna be beautiful later. Even before we tan it, it's gonna be a beautiful clean white piece of skin. It's gonna take a little time. A little elbow grease. Okay, this will be a good example of what I'm talking about. So I'll go from one side to the other, scoot everything forward, and my strokes are coming to a complete stop. I'm not trying to go as far as I can. I'm just going a reasonable distance and then stopping. And now that I have this established, I'll keep working it across the whole hide and just inching it down. Literally. All right, well there's some good tips for you. Those are important tips. Don't forget them. There we go, number two. We'll get number three and we'll back to that lime. 
Okay, I got some more lime putty here. Just want to make sure there's plenty of active lime in the solution. We'll stir up what's in there already real well. I'll get this broken up. You can see there's a lot of hair in here. It's just falling out of the hides. Lime is definitely doing its work. You can see this hide has sort of a rubbery consistency. That's from the lime swelling the hide fiber up. Okay, that looks good. Good and strong there. Again, I'm gonna get these. Make sure they get wet all over and they're not kind of just folded up. No, I'm not just gonna drop them in there and walk away. Scoot that one over. And number two. This is the deer I shot. It just seems like a really nice hide. Can't really explain it, it just feels good, healthy, and pretty big, but not super thick. Which is good for a deer skin at least. And there's our little goat. Gonna try to press out some of the air bubbles. We may have to add some water because we just lost a bunch. Probably should have done that sooner, but that's all right. It'll be fine. Okay, so there we go. But now I want to show you how sharp my knife is using the pocket strop after skinning this entire deer, including cutting off the uh, front and back legs, which you know involves hitting bones with the knife. I didn't cut through the brisket yet, the ribs, but I probably could and still keep the knife sharp. But I'm going to show you how sharp it is now. So you know, just every once in a while, as I was working, I just kind of strop this. You can see all the the metal on the strop, that black color. I wouldn't want to shave my face or anything with this, but as you can see, it is shaving hairs still. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and cut through the ribs, and then we'll check it again. That was some rough cutting, man. You, I don't know if you heard all the crunching, crunching against bones or not. Well, it's shaving, but with some hesitancy, but you know, there's, it's definitely shaving. Still quite sharp. Remember, in an emergency, stop, drop, and strop. <laughs>